Hi, I'm Steve Miller from Rutgers University. I'm speaking about a joint paper with David Zhao and Ramarathan Venkatesan. Our paper is entitled, Expander Graphs Based on GRH with an Application to Elliptic Curve Cryptography. We were motivated by some questions about the difficulty of the discrete log problem from cryptography and found some applications also to expander graphs. We published a paper in the 2005 AsiaCrypt proceedings that has more to do with the cryptography involved. This paper is more about the underlying mathematics. Here's an example of one of the graphs that our method produces. We call them GRH graphs because they rely on the generalized Riemann hypothesis to prove eigenvalue expansion. Other properties from number theory, like the Ramanujan conjectures, have been used before. This is a different analytic direction. The graph that we use involves the vertices of z mod q z star for a large parameter q, and connects two points if they differ multiplicatively by a small prime. We show under GRH that this graph is an expander. That means in particular that random walks will rapidly mix on it, and that's an important fact for some applications to cryptography. In fact, this graph arose as a special case of a slightly more complicated construction that came up studying a problem in cryptography. That's the elliptic curve discrete logarithm problem. This is the basis of elliptic curve cryptosystems, and it's a very important question to know how difficult the problem is. We can't say anything about the absolute difficulty of the problem, but we can compare it on comparable curves. Namely, we study elliptic curves which are generated over the same field and which have the same number of points. This is typically how cryptographers sample curves. If to make this precise, we need to break the curves up into families called levels. An important theorem of Tate states that the elliptic curves with the same number of points over the same field lie in an isogeny class. The isogeny class can be broken up into certain levels. This depends on their absolute endomorphism rings, which depend, of course, on the CM type of the curve over the finite field. Filtering the curves by the size of the absolute endomorphism ring is necessary for our theorem, but in practice this actually doesn't arise much as a complication. Now, an isogeny between two elliptic curves algebraically converts the discrete logarithm problem on one to the discrete logarithm problem on the other. If the kernel has small size, one can check up to small ambiguity what the solution is, and so if the isogeny can be implemented quickly, then one has an efficient reduction of the discrete logarithm problem on the two curves. Now, even though Tate's theorem says that all elliptic curves in the same level are bridged by some isogeny, that isogeny may not be a low degree isogeny, in fact, provably so. So instead, what cryptographers are able to do is to generate a number of low degree isogenies between elliptic curves in the same level. This is hard to navigate, but we prove here that this mixes very well. In fact, the graph of such connections, which sort of nature gives you within the computing feasibility of isogenies, is an expander. We're assuming GRH to prove that, and in fact, the graph I just displayed at the beginning is a simpler example of this graph, which came up from studying the discrete logarithm problem. So if an algorithm works to solve the discrete logarithm quickly in the area that's shaded in the light gray, one can bounce around from any other curve, say one of the red curves on the bottom left, and end up in that area in a small number of steps. Since the low degree isogenies are equivalences of the discrete log problem, that means the discrete logarithm problem is roughly uniform difficulty. One application of this is to government standards curves, which the U.S. Department of Commerce has suggested for common use in cryptography. One isn't sure from seeing the curve whether or not there's some back door, but our work does show that the curves that they have chosen are typical within their isogeny classes. In fact, the isogeny class for this curve is only one level, so our theorem applies directly. 